OVI, nigga. Yo, we gon' roll with it like this. Yo, check me out. I'm back in this motherfucker, feeling rejuvenated. Drop my album, then we elevate it to another level, but we never celebrate it. Introduce yourself to the world, huh? My name is uh, Virgos. I'm a MC slash spoken word artist slash producer. I'm a Point Blank Entertainment squad. And I represent Memphis and Memph Hop to the fullest. Memph Hop? What, what is this Memph Hop movement that you speak of? Oh, uh, it's actually, it wasn't even, it wasn't started by me, first of all. I'm gonna get that straight from the beginning. Uh, it was actually started by Iron Mike Coalition. Mainly, uh, the Mighty Queen, he's one of the MCs in the Iron Mike Coalition. They started that before I even started rapping, before I even knew who they was. And uh, when I started rapping, um, you know, when I got into the scene, that's who I used to hear about all the time, Iron Mike Coalition. You know, they opened up for, for KRS-One and some old folks, like some, a lot of them, not main, like anytime somebody come to Memphis back then that was uh, known, I guess, you know, they opened up for them and everything. They were, trying, they were doing their own thing. They still do to this day. And they started it themselves. We just kind of, well, me personally, I ain't going to speak for nobody else. Me personally, I, I heard it, I picked up on it, and I wanted to, you know, carry that on for my folks. A lot of people that I do rap with, they don't even know what it is. Right? I mean, didn't nobody know what it is. But it's just basically we just showing the pride that we have for our, you know, our hip-hop culture in Memphis. A lot of people outside of Memphis don't think we got a hip-hop culture, and we actually do. A lot of people... Think we got this certain type of rap, which, like I say, I'm not trying to judge anybody's music, but it's different kinds of music, hip hop music in Memphis, and this this type of music right here is really showing the hip hop side of Memphis. It's showing what we're really about. It, you know, it's about the essence. It's about the live performances. It's about just just bringing that real hip hop back to Memphis. And I'm just trying to carry on what they started. That's all. I mean, I'm not trying to take it from nobody. Nothing like that. We just trying to put carry on that tradition of what they they brought to the table. And that's all it is. Where do you think this hip hop movement stands in the state of Memphis compared to other states around the U.S.? I mean, in my opinion, uh, Memphis is a hard place to, to, to do any any kind of hip hop into anything really in general. Because if you look at other cities, other cities have you know they own like major record label places in the city. Memphis don't have it. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the, the cast that's on don't come to Memphis to even perform, and when they do, uh, you know, most of the time nobody really knows about it. Nobody comes out to support, so it, it kind of brings a a black cloud over everybody. Like I know uh, Big Crit and came here a couple of years ago. I heard that nobody go to it. I had found out about it like months later. So you know, I would have been there, but I didn't know nothing about it. I don't know if it's promotion. I don't know if it's people just not coming to support. I don't know what it is, but. As far as Memphis, it's hard to come up. It's not really an industry here. A lot of people, when they do do something with music, they go outside of Memphis to do it. Um, me personally, I would like to stay in Memphis and do my thing. You know, uh, I really love my city. There's a lot of things bad about it. There's a lot of good things good about it, just like any other city. But I would really like to come up in, in this city. But at the same time, I know, you know, you got to go outside and, and, and make connection too, especially in Memphis. You have to. I mean, it's just... It's gonna be null and void what you're doing, and um, I think I think there's a lot of potential in Memphis. There's so so many dope artists in Memphis, uh, so many, and they, we're not we're not getting the exposure that we that we really need. And you know, I mean, it's just so it, when you if you hear the music that come out of Memphis, man, it's just it's just like I don't even listen to, I don't even listen to no outside music. That, I, I mean, I listen to some, but I listen to more local music than I do the this music outside of Memphis because it, it's it's just it's pure. I mean, it's pure and raw. It's coming from the heart. I mean, we already got a musical history anyway, and I think a lot of that plays a part in the music that's coming out out of our city. I mean, you got people. You got like people like uh, my own group, PBE Point Blank Entertainment. I mean, you got you got your uh, your Iron Mike Coalitions, Duchess, KL, Snipes. I mean, SP. I mean, it's so many. I mean, it's so many people. I couldn't even name them. I promise, TMG is one of the dopest people I've heard. In, I mean, I've ever heard anywhere you know what i'm saying but it's like for us to do anything with our talent we have to we have to branch out and network in other cities but i but the but the thing about it is once we do that we make those connections we got to bring it back and try to help out the artists here instead of just be like well 
you know, forgive me if I didn't get to where I need to go, forget them with me. We can't we can't do that. We ain't gonna never get nowhere. So I mean I think I think it'll it it'll all it'll go as far as we make it go in Memphis. You know, it it, it well, as far as we make it go. We don't try to come back and do anything for our scene, then it, I mean it ain't gonna be nothing. It's gonna be forgotten. Ain't none of this stuff we doing gonna mean nothing. So I mean we just gotta we just gotta build we gotta build our own foundation and come back and keep on building on it. Oh, it's just gonna be it ain't nothing gonna happen good out of it. What age were you when you first figured out that hip hop is what you wanted to do? Oh uh, man. I mean I always I always, you know, wanted to be a rapper. You know, ever since I was in high school, I was just kinda I mean, I started writing my first rhyme when I was like in middle school, but I didn't ever rap. You know, I was kinda I was too scared to rap back then, you know what I'm saying? But um I mean, I always had a passion for poetry. I always, you know, I started out as a spoken word artist um, in, in uh, 2008, and uh, it wasn't at the time to me. It wasn't the kind of the, the kind of hip hop I was doing at the time. It wasn't really no scene for that particular style of music back then. But there was a spoken word scene. You know, I hooked up with, uh, with Fat Mac and Hype Life Marketing, and I got in that group, and I started doing spoken word. And that kind of really took off, like really good at the time. But I always wanted to to be a rapper. I did, but I didn't. I started rapping in 2009 when I started doing spoken word. But I focused more on spoken word because that's what was popping at the time. Um, you know, I after that I got a situation. I got I got married actually. You know, I, I had kids, so I had to sit back for a minute and get my my own stuff together. But when I came back, then next thing I know, it was actually a, a, a very very good scene in Memphis at the time and so I started really focusing more on what I really wanted to do and that and was rap and um you know at the time you know I started meeting you know different people different people that did hip-hop and all that and that's when I kind of started taking it really serious I mean I was okay when I first started doing spoken you know when I first started doing spoken word and rapping I was okay at rapping I mean, a lot of people knew me for the spoke, for spoken word, but I was okay at rapping, but I worked it and worked it and worked it, and I got around some people that were really dope, and, you know, they kind of pushed me to, to, to you know, start doing better at rapping. After that, man, I kind of left spoken word in the back burner. <laughs> Being real, I just left it in the back burner. I still do it. I still love to do it. I still get asked to do it, but, like, right now, it's, it's hip-hop, because to me, you can, you can do more with rap than you can with spoken word, like, Rap has an industry. Hip hop has an industry. You can make money, like real money, off hip hop if you do it right. You know, because me, like me personally, I want to have my own. I want to own my music and all that. But if you get to that position where you own all your music and stuff, you can make money off it. And I'm not just talking about selling yourself to a record deal. You get to a position where you making all, like most of all the profit of your music, you gonna make some money. Spoken word, and you just, I mean, you can't really make. I mean, being real, you can't make no money off spoken word. I mean, you can. I know some poets like J.I. and Malik Youssef, they got record deals though. Like Malik Youssef signed good music, but you can't really do what you can do with rap. And, it, and to me, rap is more, uh, I mean, I just like the, the, as far as the live performances go, I just like to feel the hip hop better now. I used to like spoken word better because I, I, I was doing it better, but now the live performances in hip hop, man, just all, you just see all the people vibing with you it's not it's intimate it's not as intimate but it's the live performance just take you to another place like for real and i just i just love that more than spoken word because i break out and do a spoken word piece at a hip-hop show in a minute and it's a di whole different feel you did a show back in february uh the winter fest i believe and uh what did it mean for you to step on stage and just see the entire crowd vibing to the music <laughs> man that man that that particular show, man, I did a lot of shows, man. That 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 show right there almost made me cry right there because, man, I I didn't use, I really didn't have no promotion other than the internet. And if you see the video on YouTube, if you look up the Memphis Memphis uh, Winter Jam 2012, you are gonna see how many people was there. I don't know how it happened to this day. I don't know how it happened, man. Like, it was just the grace of God. There was a lot of people there. And it, man, I can't even explain the feeling that I had. It was like I was, I was just this happy that day. And then on top of that, you know, that was the same night that uh, Whitney Houston died. I thought a lot of people weren't gonna come when she when she died. You know, because I mean, it, I ha I had a release show a couple of years before that, the same day that Michael Jackson died, and it was a lot of people at that show, but it wasn't as many as I wanted to be. So I thought it was gonna be the same situation with that show with the with the uh, Winter Jam, but 
Man, that was that was that was crazy. Like that was one of the biggest shows I seen had this past year. It was, it was and there were no big names on the show. It was just it was all local artists. Uh, you know, it was a lot of photographers there. A lot of people were shooting videos for it. I mean, it, it was just dope, man. I plan on doing another one uh, for 2013 in February. And I, I mean, I, I hope and pray that it be the same the same outcome as that one was. But man, that that gave me the, that that. That alone inspired me to do a lot of more stuff this year when I when I saw it, man. Cause I was nervous, I was nervous as hell right for this show. Cause I didn't know who I was gonna be there. I know I promoted it all that I could. I didn't know who I was gonna come, but when I saw that crowd, man, I was like, man. <laughs> so I know next time I do it, if I get the do the promotion that I didn't do for the last one, then it should be double. You know, it should be even bigger. So we we'll, we'll see how they go. What are upcoming shows do you have coming up in the near future? Oh um, well, right now I just got my uh, I'm I'm doing a show at at the scene on um uh, October twenty seventh. Uh, it's, it's a, just a regular. It's gonna be like a hip hop house party type thing. Um, uh, that's on the twenty twenty seventh. My wife releasing her album stages on the twentieth at uh Solution with Stefan Smith. Uh, I got a show with Fat Mac uh at the uh, Martial Arts on the tenth of November. And other than I mean, I'm gonna still be doing some show. I'm gonna do a show, another show in November, in December. I don't know what the venue is gonna be, but I know I'm gonna do two more shows. But the biggest, the main thing is gonna be the the uh, Winter Jam. I'm gonna do another Winter Jam in February, like I did earlier this year. And right now, that's it. Other than me, like I, I plan on going to Nashville and perform. I performed there earlier this year, but right now, that's it, pretty much. You on one of the uh, Team Memphis Cyphers with the guy KL? One of the major movements going on right now in Memphis. How did it feel to be a part of that movement? Man, it, 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 it's something really, really positive going on, like right now, as far as, as, far as the, the hip hop scene in Memphis, because a lot of people outside of Memphis, they got this certain stereotype of how they how they think that you know the rap music is, the hip hop music is in Memphis, and I think what KL you know did with that with that team in the cipher is. He he's showing that you know the Memphis. He's showing the other people outside of Memphis because we already know. But he's showing people outside of Memphis that we we got skills out. We got skills out here. And whether people come here and see or not, whether people care, you know, it's showing that we got some 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 real hip hop lyricists, you know, in Memphis. You know, like man. I mean, to our other up and coming artists, what advice through the struggles you can have? What what advice could you give to other upcoming artists that's trying to make a name for themselves and get up there themselves? Man, don't let, you know, I might sound a little harsh saying it, but I can't say it no other way. Don't let nine nigga make you think that they are above you and you are below them. I don't care who that is. Like, you know, when it comes, whether one people want to admit it or not, man, hip-hop is, com is competitive, man. You don't want to make it. Me personally, to me, if you don't feel like you're the best at what you do, you shouldn't be doing it. I feel like I'm the best at what I do. I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody or nothing like that, but what I do, I feel like can't nobody do what I do. Um... You know, don't let nobody. Cause I, that's the thing. That's the thing that kind of, kind of drove me to do a lot of stuff I did last year. You know, you know, not, not on no, not on no stuff trying to prove nothing to nobody. But you know, you have people that feel like they at this place right here, and you right here, and you they don't want you to get there. You gotta show them people that you can get to their spot and beyond it. You know, this, that's my main thing. I, I don't let nobody like even if I met Kendrick Lamar. Joe bad at I'm not you know I, they don't mean I feel like nobody better than me. I don't feel like they're better than me they don't have to feel I'm sure they ain't gonna feel the same way about me neither so you know you gotta stay stay true and, and stay true to what you do like don't let nobody take away you know don't let nobody make you compromise your art because to me when you compromise your art for somebody you kind of giving them your soul like you got you gotta stay true to what you do like and to me if I got signed today and then somebody tried to make me do something that's not me, man, I mean, what, I mean, what's the point in doing it if you're not doing it because it's something that you want to do? If you're not expressing yourself, that's your music is a part of your soul. You know, you can't, you don't supposed to get it away. You know, so them the two main things. You know, stay true to yourself and don't let nobody, feel, don't let nobody talk to you or or treat you like they they are uh, ahead of you. Or, or or above you in any kind of way because this you you don't do that you know so all right if somebody was looking to get in touch with you get you on book a show or get you to come jump on the track with them or how would they get in touch with you 
Uh, hit me up on my email. It's uh, virgos23 at gmail.com. V I R G H O S T 23 at gmail.com. You can hit me up on, on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Virgos Poet, Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Virgos Poet. I mean, anyway, you can Google my name and all this stuff gonna come up because I don't think nobody has their name. <laughs> so, I mean, th those are the, the main ways my email. Though. I, don't, I don't really like nobody to call me because I got a family. So, you just email me and leave your number and I'll hit you up. I give a special shout out first and foremost to, uh, to God. For doing all of this, um, and my wife, and my three little girls, my squad, most importantly, my squad, my squad, and uh, the whole milf hop, all the hip hop, everybody, like for real, even the spoken word scene, everybody, uh, shout out to everybody who's doing anything. And I tell them, they say they want that hot shit, this toxic, I'm about to drop it like water drip drop from faucets, I must have lost it, I jumped in the generation, no mosh pit in crowds, I'm still a target, he lock and load and he cocked it, a bullet, no man can stop it. Assassinations is fascinating, unless you are the one with the casket waiting, I got my AK-47, AKA my 47.